You're listening to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers with your hosts Greg Barrett and Kane Holloway. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm tired. <clears throat> Kane, it's about time you just handed it back over to me. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Don't Take Bullshit from Fucker. The world's, I just want to just say it's the world's greatest podcast. Yes, <laughs> I agree. You know, I don't, I don't know that everybody knows that. Uh, it <laughs> takes a while. You got to feel for it. Mm-hmm. But then you start thinking about it and you're like, well, is it better than Mark Barron? Well, a little bit. <laughs> what the what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it better than Joe Rogan by mm-hmm. miles? By miles? By miles? We're we're quite the experience, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are mm-hmm. we better than the NPR podcast? I believe we are. Yeah, one hundred percent. Listen yeah, to yeah, our so, melodic voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just welcome to the world's greatest podcast. <laughs> world's greatest podcast. Don't take bullshit from fuckers. Yeah, yeah. It's on everybody's year end lists. Mm, it is that's yeah. true people are putting it on their lists yeah i love it i love getting those messages thanks for everybody for listening yeah you guys totally. are wonderful and yeah, well, uh, really i hope you had a good christmas mm-hmm. i had a grand christmas how about your guys's christmas Did you? i had a good christmas yeah yeah i had a good christmas do you get anything cool uh i got i got uh two m M&M related uh presents my family knows me well. One of them is a sweater with his picture, and it's like got flowers coming out of his eyes. And the other is a Funko Pop from uh, Eight Mile. Him as B Rabbit. Oh wow! Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm yeah. I'm basically fifteen. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. How are you, Pat? Uh, n- no, no, I got I, I received no gifts this year. What, Pat? <laughs> Pat true. didn't get any gifts. I don't have anybody in my life. Really? Oh my god, that's deplorable. <laughs> oh, it's okay. No, I bought myself not. a motorcycle. Oh, that's true. Well, that's pretty good. I'm gonna get wow. I didn't know this was gonna get so depressing. I know. <laughs> I thought I thought we'd just throw a few items out there and get to the question, but yeah. now mm-hmm. now I'm concerned about Pat's family. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pat's in general, which we've never asked about because you and I are both so self-centered. That's true. <laughs> that's true. I do We've love never Pat. asked him about his family. We don't know about, about his, his family and anybody uh-huh. that would give him. Apparently, none of them will give him a gift. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I was under the impression that Pat was the healthiest of the three of us. And then to come to find out he's not getting any Christmas gifts, that's alarming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to get you something, buddy. Um, <laughs> we're going to get you something special. Yeah. Uh, it might be It might be sweet treat related. You know, popsicle, <laughs> maybe some, maybe an ice cream cone. Uh, well, I might, we might do something skincare related as well. Hey, why not? Maybe, uh, maybe aftershave. Maybe a nice product. Ooh, I yes. love a good product. I love I lotion. Could use a nice ice eye regimen. Yeah. You know what? I got a beard. I got a beard. I got beard oils and a brush that was in my stocking from Santa, and uh, and beard. Um, soap specifically to wash the and it's scented but like a manly scent and i don't think i've other than old spice i don't have any like manly scented things like i just rub deodorant on my body and i walk out with my own musk but now i have like specifically manly scented shit on my face i smell good i i love old spice yes for the names <laughs> like i believe right now i'm wearing the ambassador uh-huh Yes, I've had the ambassador. Yeah, there's the ambassador. Mm -hmm. And I think there's one, I have one that's called like the Duke of something. I can't remember, but there's, Mm -hmm. there's, I think there's an overlord. Yes, I have a, (laughs) I have a body wash that says bear love and it's an angry bear coming through the the grass. Yeah. That's my body wash right now. Bear love. My shampoo and my aftershave are both by Duke Cannon. (laughs) <laughs> that's the manliest name i've ever heard yeah duke cannon duke cannon i totally. have a, my brother-in-law gave me a, a like a, a spray that says teak wood and it's it's definitely teak wood 
<laughs> is that good or bad? I can't tell. I can't tell either because like <laughs> I, I put it on and I put I put I put like a, a one, two, and a three down my body. And uh, that's apparently too much because I walk downstairs and everyone's like, Jesus Christ. I've I, I've gone so long not putting cologne on that I don't know how much or how little to put on anymore. Well, if it's an oil, if it's an oil like patchouli is, mm -hmm. then it's going to be super scented. Yes. You know, if it's just a spray or a cologne, it that that smell won't last. Right you know yeah 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 well now i have like i have a lot of different manly-esque smells going on which is well, really what nice. i do what i do is once a year i cook a roast and then i take the drippings and i put it in a spray bottle and that's what i use <laughs> i just spray roast beef on me <laughs> and people seem to people seem to fucking love it <laughs> mixed with the blood of your enemies i get people just come up and gnaw on me <laughs> Do dogs follow you around? Yeah. Who is, what is that? Who is that? Is that Barrent? Uh, that should be called Barrent. Yeah. Barrent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be good to make a roast beef scented. Roast beef scented, and it's just called Barrent. Yeah. Mm, I want a sandwich. Oh, hello, Greg. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, that'll be a good idea. I, I'm going to give you my, I'm, I might or may or may not be sending you, I'm actually going to be coming to LA at the end of January. So I'll be seeing you guys in person. And so I may be, and may be in tow with some beard related, manly scented, or maybe I'll just give you a pound of roast beef, baby. And you just <laughs> slap it on your face after a nice shave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey guys, we have an update. Last week, we had our live show. Thanks to everybody for coming out. Um, I want to thank everybody, of course. Specifically, though, Gina Lee, uh, one of our listeners who came to the live show, she's got a special announcement going on. Do you want to do that now? Sure. Actually, uh, Gina just had a book published. Uh, it's called Fast and Fun Watercolor. We're going to put a link to it in the show description. So help out our listener, Gina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you like to watercolor, who doesn't? And she, look, this isn't this isn't just water coloring. It's fast. It's the quickest. It's also water... fun. It's also it's fun. The funnest. It's so super fun. It's the funnest. And I gotta tell you, when I'm when I'm usually doing watercolors, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> that is. I gotta true. hustle. I want to hustle through it. Yeah, I've seen how you craft. Yeah, I'm no saison. I need mm -hmm. to get in there and get that shit done. Are you wearing your fingerless gloves right now? I took them off because my palms were sweaty. <laughs> knees weak? My knees were weak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, pick up Gina's book. It's in the description. Um, and now with that, we also discussed um, cover bands last week. And, uh, and I think the week before, this came in from Jill about a, a guy that she was in a relationship with that's been talking a, a bunch of mad shit about her and uh, in her scene. And she sort of explains what's going on with that. Um, so this is a well, follow-up. She talked about having to go see him in his band is almost like that was a, an idea for a date. That was, oh, that was someone else. That was a different. Uh, well, listener. that was a different. Yeah, that person. was. Yeah, that was one of our audience members. And um, actually, I would love a follow up to that. How did it because it's two, it's Tuesday, it was just past Tuesday, which is when the day was supposed to take place. So let us know how it went. Did he play it cool? Do you, you guys have a second day coming up? Uh, you can email us at dtbffpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know how the date went. Yeah. But before we had a uh, Jill talk about breaking up with a sociopath who got a bunch of DUIs. And she was always bailing him out. He's on his like seventh girlfriend and he's got a bunch of minions that are talking mad shit about our girl, Jill. And uh, she wants to know how to deal with that. And we told her that, uh, you know, you're going to have to let bygones be bygones because he's a, the type of guy that's just going to talk shit forever to make himself feel better. Um, but she did specifically talk about his bands and we wanted to know about his bands. We want to know specifically about his fucking bands. 
And so she says, Greg and Kane, I'm still laughing over Pat's 14 second periods band name. Oh, uh, I wish I could take credit for that. That was Jared. Oh, was it? Oh, Jared. Uh, she says the ex thinks he is the country music cover band equivalent of getting of Getty Lee. Or you mentioned flea. Magic comes from these hands. It's a quote. Magic. Oh my God. Magic comes from these hands. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna need them. <laughs> He's gonna need them. I really hate to put the bands on blast as they are still playing without him for one reason or another, all of which wasn't his fault. And do have talented musicians. They're almost all old school red dirt country cover bands, which isn't my scene at all as a rock and roll girl. He did fill in as an audition for a friend's husband's country slash rock mix cover band. And he didn't get the gig as he kept starting the songs in the wrong key, which he claimed the band was playing in the incorrect key, not him. This uh -huh. fucking guy. <laughs> God damn. Uh, didn't have any of the newer stuff down well enough to play live. He's great at old country covers and got into it with the guitarist. Other than witness, witnessing part of the argument with the guitarist, I got an entirely different story from the ex. My friend's husband said it was embarrassing. Another band he was in, he apparently showed up drunk to rehearsal, hadn't learned the material, which were originals, continued drinking, and got into a nasty fight with the singer. Uh, I just heard about it from the singer as I got a hold of him to see if the ex crashed his house. While I think I'm physically safe, I just feel extremely uncomfortable going. However, I'm taking your advice. A local rock band is playing a Christmas Eve show on Friday. The band has two of my good friends, uh, one of his friends, and I'm not familiar with their new guitarist. I'm trying to get up the courage to go. I plan to get dolled up and put on my cutest outfit and not acknowledge his existence if he shows, which I've always stuck to my side of the venue anyway. Um, Wish me luck. Lots of love. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you guys at DTBFF Jill. Well, good luck, right on, Jill. Jill. Yeah. Good luck. I hope that went well. Mm -hmm. Me too. Uh, we got some voicemails, though. Uh, I can't wait to hear them. Uh, you can call in the show and leave a voicemail. What's that number, Pat? That number is 323-379-5544. How you don't have it down yet? I know, so I, it's insane that I don't know it by heart. It's always <laughs> it's the three seven nine. For some reason, that doesn't stick. That's so funny. If somebody asked, if somebody held a gun to my head and asked me <laughs> you, to just give the numbers, not even in the right order, <laughs> just some of the numbers. Can you think of some of the numbers from your 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 show's hotline? <laughs> they just have to, they just have to shoot me. <laughs> hey. Somebody <laughs> Somebody hey. called in. <laughs> somebody called into our our show's hotline just to say hey. Not just hey. 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 <laughs> yeah, that was a gray sweatpants hey. That was it sure was. It had a lot of was, undertones, sexual. Yeah, undertones. yeah, yeah. That was great. That was yeah, great. Hey, but feel hey free back. to do that. Yeah, yeah do that's that great. Yeah. We didn't say what the calls had to be. No, you <laughs> could you could literally call up and just say what's up. You don't have to have a question. I mean, we're an advice show by, by nature, but just a quick hey is so fucking funny. Uh, yeah, I can't handle it. That you would take the time to write the number down. You got to write it down. Or probably had to stop your, you probably had to stop the podcast and rewind, even though it's in our description, right? It's in our description. Yeah. And then call it up, and then it, it rings, and you wait a second, you get a message, <laughs> and you're like, hey. Probably the funniest joke ever put on the show, I think. That's amazing. <laughs> well done. Well crafted. We did actually get a another voicemail with an actual question. 
Yay. Hi, Ken and Greg. I've been putting up with a lot of bullshit this last semester. Um, I'm a college student, and I have an apartment-style dorm. Um, I'm an RA, so I have my own bedroom. However, since ours is an apartment style, we have another bedroom, and I have two roommates who continue to not clean their dishes and leave dirty laundry all over our apartment. We finally got to winter break when they both were moving out and everything. They still continued to leave dishes in our room, and there is dirty dishes in their room. And the only reason I knew that, know that is because as an RA, we have to do room foods to make sure nobody's, like, hiding in their room and trying to stay over winter break. Um, and I went into the room. There was plates with food in the dishes. All I know is they're going to attract rats, and I'm tired of putting up with their bullshit. This has been multiple times I've had to deal with them leaving their dishes for weeks. They'll leave for a full week, leave all of their dishes in the sink. So frustrating. And also while being an RA, they've also broken multiple policies while living with me, which has been so annoying. And I have to deal with them again in two weeks when I come back for winter break or after winter break. Any advice on what I should do? Thank you so much. And I love the show. It's really a lot of fun to listen to, especially on my way to class. Thanks. Wow. Don't you, as an RA, have the power to throw people out of the building? That's a well, that's a good point. I don't know anything about college or RAs or anything. I mean, I had we had an RA, and he was an authority figure for certain. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, he was a good guy uh, that I recall. Um, I mean, they're there really to be helpful to you more than to be hurtful. You know, they're there in case you're struggling with stuff or whatever. It's a, it's a pretty thankless job. Um, mm. I think you should tell both your roommates that that kind of behavior usually ends in a suicide. What? <laughs> when you leave your plates out, you're a mess. <laughs> So <laughs> let's let's scratch that. <laughs> I didn't go down quite the way I thought it would. Let's scratch it. I, I thought you were serious. Oh, I did not open your face. You thought you were serious. I thought you were serious. I was like, I thought it was just being a pig. I didn't realize they were gonna kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Well, fucking, first of all, god damn it. There's nothing, here, play this. Just play this part out loud. Just take your headphones out, and when your roommates, when you're back from winter break, um, um, just put this part on speaker and say, hey, guys, um, clean up your shit. Jesus Christ. There is nothing more uh, self-involved than people who don't clean up after themselves when you're a roommate if these motherfuckers live by themselves and that's how they want to live in a slop house in a just a pile of their own filth like they like their apartment is a bathtub okay fine whatever but motherfucker i live here too all right and apparently if the ra has some sort of semblance of of authority yeah just tell them uh, pick up your shit you're disgusting and it smells in here how am i supposed to have people over that aren't you if it's disgusting and it's a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. And how do either of you ever expect to be in a relationship with another human being of any kind if this is the way you live? It's so it's such a turnoff. It's the biggest turnoff. Clean up your shit. Like plates with stuff on them left out and then pile on to like yuck. Yeah, you're you're gross. Yeah. You're, and leave your place in your own room is a bummer. It's such a bummer. I hate people. I hate when you have to room with people. Yeah. <laughs> my, my last roommate was like this. She just, she would, she would make food and then on the, and then just if it spilled onto the stove, 
she just left it. And there and there was two cats in the house. One of them was mine. And fur would fur would pop off their body and float around in the in the ether. And then it would land on the wet slop. And now I have dried over gravy and cat hair on my stove. And I want to cook now. I want to cook. But now I got to go over and I got to confront her and be like, can you please clean up your thing before it, it, it would be real nice. And then eventually it's like, you're disgusting. Clean up your Gra shit. I'm trying gravy to and cat hair is going to be my next band. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the name of a, of a clothing line for us. Gravy and cat hair, gravy and cat hair, baby. We got coats. We got hoodies. No, we, we just socks. only have no only pants. <laughs> This is my idea. Why do we yeah. now only sell pants? Because that's the brand that we sell. Uh, but we, you and I are jacking. Had enough people. already. Had enough already. Wait a minute. So wait a minute. The 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 cat or the 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 pants that we sell at enough already are under the clothing line of cat hair and gravy. Yeah. <laughs> gravy, gravy and cat hair. What was it? Cat hair and gravy. Cat hair and gravy, which is what you're living like. Our listeners' roommates. Did she leave her name? The RA's roommates. Hey, R RA's roommates. You guys are a pile of cat hair and gravy. You're disgusting. <laughs> are you listening? I hope you're listening, and I hope your face is hot. It's pink and warm from shame. I hope you feel shame. She had to call into the show. She had to call us to deal with you. <laughs> now, how do you feel? Pick up your plates and wash them. Pick them up. We'll be right back. What does it mean? You know? Does it make you feel good? We got one from Samantha Galloway. This one made me laugh. And she said, this mess hit home for someone. Uh, when a flashlight grows dim or quits working, do you just throw it away? Of course not. You change the batteries. When a person messes up or finds themselves in a dark place, do you cast them aside? Of course not. You help them change their batteries. Some need double A attention and affection. Some need triple a attention and affection and acceptance some need c compassion some need d direction and if they still don't seem to shine simply sit them sit with them quietly and share your light i did not like that journey <laughs> i think we can all agree that um all batteries are essentially the same <laughs> Yeah, S small batteries are used for small little little things, and big batteries are used for big things. But all batteries are essentially have the same function. It's to charge up whatever the battery is needed for. So yeah. people aren't different sizes of batteries. I hate you. <laughs> hey, you who wrote that? I hate you. <laughs> I'm gonna cast you aside in the dark. They were like writing it going, I'm really going on this thing, man. Oh, I'm going to name some, all the batteries. Some people are, uh, some people are double A. I know my boyfriend is, he's definitely double A, <laughs> but my mom, she's triple A because she's so small. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> that one's from Samantha. Uh, what do yeah. you got, Greg? 
this is, uh, I have learned to seek happiness by limiting my desires rather than trying to satisfy them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's from uh, Stoic Reflections. Oh. Mm -hmm. John Stuart Mill. John Stuart Mill. Classic. John Stuart Mill. He was always saying that shit. I don't know who the fuck John Stuart Mill is. I don't know. I don't know him either. I like the idea of stoic reflections. Like you're sitting near a calm lake, you know, like nobody's in it and you're just standing there thinking about things. You got rocks in your hands, but you're not throwing them in the lake yet. Cause you're, you're sitting there just thinking you're yeah. very stoic looking at your own reflection. Who am I? Am I a double A battery? Am I a big D battery? That's the name of my shirt. <laughs> Big <deep. laughs> high five <laughs> what else um, do we got we actually got some submissions through our discord uh, the Alan Brand says I fell asleep halfway through this one stop waiting for Friday for summer for someone to fall in love with you for life happiness is achieved when you stop waiting for it and make the most of the moment you are in now. Oh, God. If I hear another fucking person tell me about the moment that they're in, I swear to God, I was all over that shit at one point, and now it just drives me fucking insane. You don't like being in the moment anymore? Oh, fuck the moment. You know, <laughs> embrace, you know, fucking have a little hope. Who cares? Look forward to Friday. Look forward to Christmas. I like looking forward to Friday. I look forward to shit that you're going to do. Like when Kane comes down here and we do the show live, like look forward to that. Who fucking yeah. gives, don't, the fucking moment is a little overrated. The moment, yeah. I'm in look, the moment right now and I'm just uh -huh. an asshole. You're so mad. But you know what? I've thought about this a lot. I've thought about this so often. I think that it's, and it, it's, it is very difficult to live in the moment. And sometimes you're just like, this moment sucks. You know, like yeah. I, I got like I one time I worked in Seattle and I was walking. I was going to go get my lunch and I was really hungry and I was walking past the gum wall and uh, in, in, in downtown Seattle in the Pike Place Market. And I was like so hungry, I was looking forward to getting these tacos. And I remember there was a guy there was a guy sitting near the gum wall taking a shit. And I watched him take a shit and I didn't get lunch that day. And I remember thinking about, wow, that moment was ruined. I was so looking forward to living in the moment with these tacos. And then in the moment, a guy took a shit right in front of me. I go, okay, well, I guess that moment's ruined. I wish I had, I wish I, I wish I was in the future eating my tacos, but now I'm currently in the moment watching this guy take a shit near, well, you know near, who was really, near you know gum. Who was really, you know, who's really in the moment was the guy taking the shit. He was just living his truth. <laughs> and I he wish wasn't I had doing, he wasn't, he wasn't acting out. He wasn't fantasizing. He wasn't thinking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. He was living in his moment. He was having himself a shit. How much more disgusting can an alleyway get? An alleyway devoted to people's already chewed gum stuck to a wall with their dirty fucking fingers. And the guy's like, you know, there's a good place to take a shit there. What a fucking nightmare. That's where COVID started. I was didn't just going to say, Wuhan. that's where COVID came from. It's disgusting. The gum wall is a fucking nightmare. And people, it's a tourist attraction where people walk in and will stand as close to the gum without touching the gum and then take a picture. It's fucking gross. And homeless people shit there. <laughs> and I wanted to get tacos. My day was ruined. It was ruined. Yeah. Anyway. That guy ended up being my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. We got another one in our Discord from Triptician. I know I've matured when I've realized every situation doesn't need a reaction. Sometimes you just got to leave people to do the lame stuff that they do. Mm -hmm. Did you just read something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> lame anytime some anytime there's lame in a sentence it automatically is lame that's the that's that's how that works that whole thing yeah. was lame <laughs> then we've got one here from gina lee you may not be where you want to be but you're not where you used to be and that's major well yeah you could be in prison <laughs> <laughs> yeah now, those guys are some know, shitty I roommates. I don't know if that's major. 
You know, I used to be in a home with a loving family, but now I'm in prison. <laughs> And I I'm used holding to be on some Oprah. guy's pocket. I, I used to be on Oprah, and now I'm on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird because I used to not be on this podcast, and now I am. So that's <laughs> disparate levels of success. Yeah. You think you think we'll ever be on Oprah? You and me, like we'll get all the three of us. We'll get to walk on Oprah and or O, or maybe just hang out with Oprah. I don't know. That Oprah doesn't really have a program except for when she just decides to interview somebody super famous. Well, what if what if we have a big bombshell we're gonna drop, and then you think Oprah would, you think Oprah would in interview us then? No. You know, like <laughs> like like Harry and his wife or whatever, whatever that thing was about. <laughs> racism. Yeah. I think it was about racism. I can't remember. You think if we were gonna drop a bomb like that, like you and I have a baby that's not accepted by our families or something? <laughs> you think Oprah would interview us? I don't think so. <laughs> but then we could get more listeners to the podcast. It's my hope that she doesn't know about this podcast. <laughs> I would love to think that Oprah Winfrey has a popsicle pat pillowcase wrapped around a pillow somewhere. That would be that would be amazing. And like and like like Clooney comes over for tea or whatever happens with rich famous people. And he's like, who the fuck is that? And then Oprah's <laughs> like, oh, it's a little hidden gem of mine. <laughs> that, would, that would make my fucking life. I don't even, it doesn't, I don't need my face on it. I just want Pat's face plastered on all kinds of shit, billboards. I want people to always be like, what is that and what's it for? <laughs> <laughs> is this a fucking fight club situation? <laughs> what is this guy? What is he promoting? Well, through some internet sleuthing, you know, we do a lot of uh, research on this show, Pat specifically. And Pat, you ended up finding uh, a question on the internet about what was the thing that uh, that turned you off from somebody you initially had such a big attraction to? Like, what was the thing? And you, through reading the comments, there's like a threat. There's like a unifying thread that goes along with this. Yeah, there was in excess of 3,000 comments on this particular question, which was, ladies, what makes you lose interest in a man that you once had interest in? And looking over the comments, there is a very clear winner where it, it comes up in almost every comment. And that is it is... Fart? Is it farts? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Like the f frequency... The just length. farting, just in general, just like you, you really liked him and then he just ripped one and you were like, Jesus, this is fucked up. <laughs> what if he, what if it was an accident? You know, Tom Holland farted on Zendaya and they're together still <laughs> in the spider suit because it's I'm snug. I feel like if I went through the comments, that would probably be in there somewhere, but the number one by a mile is inconsistency. Oh, okay. Presenting yourself not showing as, up, not being, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, presenting yourself wow. as something you're not, and then uh -huh. over time becoming something completely different. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That makes sense. I deal with a lot of people, you know, in my coaching who have struggled with that, you know? And it's funny because they'll, they'll, they'll tell the story of the relationship as though it was great, right oh he did this he did this he did this but then all of a sudden he drops off the map a little bit he gets a little busy uh he's struggling with his ex-wife he's all of a sudden and it's just all of a sudden it just becomes this thing where he doesn't say as much stuff as he used to say and then it's out the you know it's 88 not the gate as my dad would say 88 not the gate well, that's yeah. fucking great love yeah. that yeah yeah um that is an interesting thing because yeah, that is that is that is a turnoff if you're expecting someone, you know, especially someone who spits out platitudes of one thing of what they're like, and then then you're in you're in it with them, and then all of a sudden it's a complete it's a completely different and separate thing. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the things you have to really be careful of when you're dating is that men love bomb at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Men really do love bomb. And they say a lot of fucking, they say a lot of grandiose shit. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of like, God, I've never felt this way. And I could see us having kids and, you know, Oof. we should be looking at a house and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I hear this constantly. I had a hard time it's answering awesome. those questions when I was when I started dating. Like immediately afterwards, it's like this girl asked me, "What do I? What are my thoughts on marriage and kids?" And I said, um, "I don't know." <laughs> and she she was like, "Well, like, do you want to have marriage and kids?" And I I don't. Well, there's two questions there. There is. Do you, Kane, as a person, see yourself having mar being married and having kids? And then there's, do you want to have kids and marry me? Right. So um, you're asking two questions because I always wanted kids mm -hmm. growing up. I and I and I was always certain that I wanted to be married until right before I met Amira that I wasn't sure. You know, I just struggled in relationships so much that I was like, maybe there isn't a perfect perfect person out there so maybe i won't be married sure i i feel now and i felt in my last i've i feel this way when i talk whenever i talk to women who ask who asked me that question uh i don't honestly with with children i would love to i would love to be in love and be with someone that's like my best friend and if that person is like who really we both understand each other is like i want to have kids with you then i would want to have kids with them but i don't want to have children just to, for the sake of furthering my bloodline i don't see the point in that i uh i don't i don't understand really the thought of wanting to be a, pa a parent it's not something i'm good with kids but i don't and i love my my sister's kids but i don't have a a need to want to be a dad and the same faction that I don't want to really get married again. I really didn't see the point the last time I did it, but we did it anyway. But we also had a, I had a conversation where it's like, I don't, I don't need that. Like I, I don't need to be married. I also, cause I don't, I don't need this big show to then let everyone know that I love you. I think that's cause we're always gonna struggle with that conversation when we're together anyway. And I think like having this big show of affection towards each other is pointless. You know, I really, I don't see the, I don't see getting, I don't understand getting married. So, um, and I've never, I've never actually said that out loud on a podcast. But I don't think so. I'm not sure. I can't really remember, but I know like, moving forward i had a hard time answering that question i think you're really hurting the breaking the listener's heart <laughs> i just right don't now i just don't understand I think why there's a can't... lot of listeners out there that would like to marry you no don't marry <laughs> me. drop into drop into to kane's dms <laughs> <laughs> i don't he was he was this close to being the bachelor this year so. oh man i could dude i could be the bachelor look at the, the okay, we're gonna get off on a whole other tangent, but I basically just I don't understand why we can't just be us and why we have to do that other shit. I don't like the idea of level jumping on a relationship. Like you, like it's like okay, well we've been together this long. Obviously we need to get married. Well now that we're married, we obviously need to have children. It's like why do we need to do any of it? Like why can't we just live our lives and then when it feels right, do it. I you think know. most people, I don't feel like people need, feel like they need to do it. I feel like people feel like they want to. Yeah. It's a major deal to have kids. Yeah. It's epic. You kind of want to, I mean, when you start thinking about it and really plot it out, I mean, for the most part, I think if mm -hmm. you're a decent human being, you realize what you're undertaking and you want to do it, you know? Yeah. You know, you like family, you love the family that you have. And then, so then you want to create another family to be around, you know? And, uh, and uh, I mean, I, that's my favorite thing in the whole world is my family. I don't really give it anything else is second. You know, I, I just really love, Sure. you know, I mean, we just, I just got back from seeing my in-laws and I love them and, you know, the kind of fun that we have together is, you know, yeah, can't get anywhere else. So 
I think there's something to that, but not everybody else has those experiences. Right. You know, you didn't have a great experience with your dad. So why would you want to be one? Right. Yeah. I, I had a, I had a, I remember I told a buddy, I said, uh, he asked if I ever wanted kids and I said, uh, no, cause they'll just end up hating me one day. And he's like, why? And I go, I don't know. <laughs> it's just my fear that they'll grow up and they'll hate my guts and they'll never want to talk to me again. <laughs> and that can't happen. That, that can't for sure happen. can happen. I, I, and I would break, that would break my heart. And if any one of my sister's kids was like, I don't want to talk to uncle Kane anymore. My, my heart would be, my little heart would be broken in half into a million pieces. I would be crushed. Um, but I get, but again, I'm not, I'm not, I won't not have children with someone I'm in love with um, because I'm adamantly, adamantly against the idea of having children. If me and her are great, if we like, if I'm with someone who I get her and she gets me and it's like, God, I want to, I want to have a family with you. That's, it's, that's, that's where I come from. It's not that it's not the generality of being parents. I want us to build a family together. I'm all for that shit. But yeah, I, I gotta fucking find that lady. So I'll see you around. See you around out there, wherever you are. Reddit remix. I have a Grinch fetish. My, <laughs> my boyfriend shows... My boyfriend knows about this and for the most part accepts this. He isn't crazy about it and doesn't really get it, but he at least tries, which is all I ask. He'll sometimes read the book to me to set the mood <laughs> or, <laughs> or if he's really feeling kinky, tell me you're a mean one in the heat of the moment. <laughs> uh He's even begrudg begrudgingly, he's even begrudgingly come around to at least playing one of the three versions of the film every time we do the deed. Although we tend to stay away from the live action one because it's too much for me. It's too much for me. The live action one. <laughs> the thing is, I don't want to hear about the Grinch or listen to the Grinch, watch the Grinch. I want to be fucked by the Grinch. <laughs> And for the record, this is common among women. It is? It's common? Women want to have sex with the Grinch? Yeah, I don't know. You maybe need to make new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Just where'd you guys meet up at? Fucking God damn it. The Grinch's bulging sack of toys to me and many others is what a Mack truck is to Cardi B. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get any of those things the fact that he's good with dogs and experience he's not good he tortures max he is horrible to that dog what the fuck are you talking about okay the fact that he's good with dogs and experienced trauma at a young age makes me want a long fuzzy dick even more oh my god i hate this <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I told him straight up. I told him to put on the greenest, silkiest Grinch costume he could find, kidnap me from my bed on Christmas Eve, and then ravage me in front of the Christmas tree. Yo. <laughs> God damn. He flat out refused. Said it was too weird for him. I was literally begging this man to let this pussy save Christmas. <laughs> and he was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and it, it ended up turning into a fight where he admitted he only gave into my initial Grinch kinks to placate me and was still uncomfortable about the fact that I had moaned Grinch during sex. <laughs> but only because his song was playing in the background. <sighs> so he's drawn a line. And if I don't drop the Grinch fetish, which as I said, is incredibly common among women, but sadly taboo, he's done for good. I don't wanna lose him over this, but it's really hard for me to see past my sexual proclivities, especially during Christmas season. Is there any way we can even compromise on this or do I simply need a more adventurous man? Oh my God. 
Look, I don't want to kink shame yeah, sure. anybody. Sure. Mm -mm. No, who does? Probably took a lot to mm -hmm. have the good courage to put this on Reddit. Of all places, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. And, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you have a need and you want it satiated, uh -huh. then you have to ask for what you want. So yes. she's, she's doing what we would recommend in a relationship. Mm -hmm. However, you also have to be okay with the response. Yes. I was with somebody that really wanted me to dress like a cop. And I just, I don't like costumes. No. Of any don't. kind. Of any kind. I'm not a dress up guy. I never have been. I don't, no. uh, I like Halloween for the candy. Sure. <laughs> I don't, I don't need to also dress up like, uh -huh. once I got to be the guy behind the door and not going from door to door, I was happier that way. Ah. G giving candy. I, I think sometimes seeing people in costumes is cute. Mm -hmm. You know, I can appreciate a good costume like anybody else. Sure. Um, but I don't need to dress up like one. But uh, I think you can't shame your boyfriend for not wanting to put his fuzzy green dick into you. <laughs> True, true. You know, true, 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 true. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I will say to the guy who doesn't want to be the Grinch, you, it, I know it's weird, but you may be missing out on some of the best sex you'll ever have. Uh, I one time looked like Captain Jack Sparrow. And uh, the girl I was with was so turned on. <laughs> and then that became sort of a regular staple. And at one point, because I can do impressions, was like, please learn how to do a Captain Jack Sparrow impression and talk dirty to me. And I did, I did do that. I did <laughs> do that. And it was amazing. <laughs> the Grinch is a whole other level, though, bro. Because you like... Like, what if you want to have that on a constant basis? What do you always have to have a Christmas tree ready? <laughs> you got to fucking put the Christmas tree up, strap on the fucking thing. Does he does he get makeup put on? Like, there's a whole other level to this that is. But like uh, Captain Jack Sparrow or being a cop, like those are kind of easy to understand sexual archetypes. Sure. Right, you're a pirate or you're uh -huh. a fucking cop, you're some kind of an authority, mm -hmm. some kind of a rogue mm -hmm. human being. The Grinch is this disgusting, dumpy. <laughs> he is dumpy. <laughs> so dumpy, he's just fat and oh god, my favorite thing ever. His shoes are his shoes are too tight. His heart his heart is ice cold. I love <laughs> the fact. That she's like, yo, he ha he went through a hard childhood, and that <laughs> makes me even hornier. Fuck. Yeah, and like, and your and your idea of good with pets. He's horrible to that dog. He mistreats Max, and the most egregious of what he forces him to be complicit in his his scheme to steal Christmas. Yeah, he 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 ties an around. oversized branch to his head. <laughs> carves off some of the pieces until he's right side up sends him down the hill where he snowballs <laughs> yeah he makes him chill with all of the presents he stole and then force and whips he whips him up Mount Crumpet he is terrible yeah. to that fucking dog I bet you if yeah. the Grinch was hungry enough, he'd eat Max. He doesn't give a fuck about Max. <laughs> no. But I also love that the that the uh, live action version is too much. Like it's like she's she's overstimulated. Like the concept <laughs> yeah. of Jim Carrey walking in and being like, ah, "I'm gonna hate the Who's alphabetically." <laughs> she's just like, ah, ah. <laughs> Uh, fuck, you know, yeah, I think Greg's right. That's um, 
yeah, you can't, it, that's what you want. And maybe it is if, if you can't get over this, this big sexual hill, you know, maybe go look for somebody who does, uh, I mean, overall have a, have a think on what your relationship feels like without it. Is it, is, does, are you fulfilled without the Grinch thing? um sexually and or emotionally you know do you feel fulfilled if not you know start looking elsewhere uh but uh you know and good luck to both of you i good luck i hope you get yeah. what you want yeah happy new year happy new year is 2022 uh that's it that's the end of the show guys um if you want to support us in any facet we have a store we have all kinds of cool shit on there. We have a thirst trap, uh, cool looking thirst trap shirt and hoodies and pillowcases. Always be blocking. Don't take bullshit from fuckers. Merchandise at our Redbubble store. Link is in the description. You can also support the show by going to Patreon. Patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast. We did a bonus episode with Leanna Joan and Jared Rodriguez from the Hello and Goodbye podcast, where we asked, is vulnerability an attractive trait in men? Um, and we try to discuss that and have a conversation about that. So go check out that bonus episode. You can also see the full version of this show and our beautiful faces for only a dollar. If you pop in a dollar of the Patreon, you get to see, our, see us talk to each other. And uh, you can follow the show, DTBFF Podcast, on Instagram. You can follow me, at Kane Holloway. I'm Mitch Gregor. I'm at DTBFF Producer Pat. And you can call in the show. What's that number, Pat? That number is 323-379-5544. Don't take bullshit from fuckers. Fuck them. Hey there, if you like the show, you can find bonus episodes and more at our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast. And then rate the show five stars on iTunes because it's the right thing to do. All music by the Rating Monarchs, produced by Patrick Kelly. <laughs> <laughs>